two words that often come up when discussing Reiner Knizia, the good doctor of gaming's accomplishments, are minimalism and auctioning. And while the totality of his library doesn't fit into that Venn diagram, many of his most notable games fit into one, the other, or snugly into both. Which is exactly where 1998's Cats and Jammer Blues fits, but is a relatively unknown Knizia game, exactly what Bytewing Games is setting out to change. Hot off the success of their very good Zuvatus, and with a pair of new Knizia games on the way, Bytewing Wing is calling for a reassessment of this auctioning hopeful classic with Cat Blues The Big gig. Like Anthrax and Public Enemy, Cats and Jazz are an iconic matchup that seem totally unrelated but work oh so well. Played over three games which can be considered three successive nights of busking for different crowds of mice, each round cards are flipped from the deck until two of the same number or a joker are shown. Then going around the table, players continue to bid in order until all but the winner passes, pays their bid, and scoops up their winning. And the twist? Well, the cards that you're bidding are actually the same cards that you're bidding on, or at least come from the same source. With a deck of only ones through fives, along with some jokers, the amount of your bid is the number of cards that you bid, which must either be all different numbers, which is effectively a tiebreaker value of zero, or all the same number of cards, which has the tiebreaker value of the number played. So two cards of different numbers beats out a single card, two twos beats out two cards of different numbers, two fives beats out two twos, and three cards of different numbers beats out any combination of two cards. But why give up the cards in hand for the cards you're claiming? Well, once you win a hand, and only when you win a hand, you can discard four matching cards to form a quartet, nabbing a matching number of mouse tips, aka points. So ones aren't particularly valuable as tips, nor are they particularly valuable as biddable cards in sets of themselves, but are extremely valuable when it comes to diverse hands having a larger quantity which allows you to outbid other players without bidding matches of better value cats. It's brilliant. This subjective and situational value is the fascinating key to this game, which is, like the best Kinesia games, intrinsic, elemental. It's something that you pick up on subconsciously within a few hands without having to math everything out. It's a masterclass on multi-use components, which is fleshed out just enough through jokers and quartet tokens, the former of which is a wild and can be spent for bidding or points like any other card, but sits in front of you, and when the night ends, by all the night's 20 mouse tips or card deck running out, the player with the most jokers loses some points. Quartet tokens, on the other hand, are a set collection mechanic, where the first quartet of each number you complete nets a token, and the player with the most at the end of all three nights gets a big fat bonus 10 points. If you've been following this channel or our socials recently, you'll notice that there's been an uptick in the small box card game department, particularly when it comes to trick taking games. So Cat Blues feels timely. And while not truly a trick taking game, the sort of extremely tactical play, the constantly fluctuating hand and the oh God, what have I done? Low stakes hilarity made Cat Blues a hit in our house. Which begs the question, what happened in 1998? Bitewing owner Nick Murray goes into some speculation in his own experience with the classic in the rulebook, along with details on how this new edition sought to rectify the rough edges of the original release. Players can now replenish a hand up to four cards after cashing out quartets. The game is limited to the original intended for a player count, and the game spans three nights with their own pool of tips, only carrying over earnings and the new quartet tokens before resetting fresh hands and decks each game. Personally, I've never played the original, but these changes as described feel logical and necessary to elevate the game to its current state. The outstanding visual production does a great job inviting players in, and the game itself is easy to learn but full of challenging decisions and deft plays. I particularly love the subtle flourish in only being able to cash in your quartets if you won an auction, so there's a deft balance you have to strike between waiting for the right auction, the 
right bid, the right cards in hand versus the desperate urgency that comes in watching a swiftly depleting deck and pile of tips. You have to balance these things because if you don't cash out the quartets that you've been working towards, then they're going to be meaningless when the night runs out. Which brings me to some of the things to be aware of. While updates were made to combat overly penalizing plays that new players might find themselves victims of, there still feels like a pretty high skill ceiling to the game, which can be good, but that elemental feeling you develop for the value of the cards I mentioned, well, knowing something is valuable is one thing, figuring out how best to utilize it is another. Mastery will take time. Also, this is a small game, but it isn't a short game. There's a modern expectation that the lower the components, the more short and shallow a game will be, which, as with the depth, time too is a factor. There's a short game variant where you can play only one night, but a full game is likely to take the full 45 minutes on the box, a rarity for a package this small consisting of mostly cards that's worth it, but know what you're getting into. Cat Blues The Big Gig is a beautiful production that sheds light on what I now know to be an underappreciated minimalistic auctioning classic by the guy who has brought us so many icons. And while this is never going to eclipse some of the most influential games by the good doctor of gaming, it is well worth checking out for fans of Kinesia and card games alike. And that's our review, but let me know what are some of the underappreciated gems that you only discovered in far retrospect that you think should have gotten more accolades and perhaps a new production to come out. Put it in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting. Thanks for being such an amazing community. You know that I've been Jack for the Cardboard Herald.